Go bow with me, please. Our gracious Heavenly Father, let's thank you for this day that we can come together and be about your work for the Cherokee people. Uh, guide and direct us that we might be pleasing in your sight. Protect our soldiers overseas and their families here at home. And, and be with each and every one that's suffering. And, and uh, give us the, the power to, to help ease, ease the load for as many as we can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, roll call, please. Curtis Snell? Here. Chris Sutt? Here. Jewel Anklin? Bill John Baker? Here. Jack Baker? Here. Harley Buzzard? Here. Julia Tutts? Here. Bradley Cobb? Joe Crittenden? Here. Jody Fishingpot? Meredith Fraley? Here. Janelle Fulbright? Here. Don Garvin? Here. Chuck Coskin Jr.? Here. Tana Gloria Jordan? Present. David Thornton? Kara Cowan Watts. John Masters. Who? We do have a quorum. Here. We will now approval of the minutes for the January 11th meeting. So no, moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on down to reports, we've got the. Uh, Management Resources, Angela Drews. Mr. Snell, as you can see, Ms. Drews is not here, uh, so she's asked me to uh, come in and uh, stand in for her. Uh, so uh, I will try to muddle through this. Uh, you do have Management Resources report in front of you. I will not uh, go through and uh, uh, read all of it, but I will answer any questions you might have. I will highlight uh, just a few things. One is the certificate of occupancy was issued for West Salem Springs uh, convention space, and uh, they are uh, beginning to break ground for the Ramona Casino. Another uh, item of note is that, uh, actually it's a, more of a favor from each of you that I would like, is that uh, Natural Resources is now involved in its uh, annual heirloom seed giveaway. Uh, we have, uh, last year we gave about 6,000 packets of seed of heirloom crop, Cherokee heirloom crops that uh, the tribe grew, and we're in that now. So if you know of anyone that uh, would like some of those, please have them contact me. Uh, Ms. Miller out front contacted us before the meeting, and uh, we got her uh, uh, quite a goodie bag of seeds. So please check that before you leave, and if what you need is not in there, contact uh, anybody in Natural Resources, we can help you. Uh, oh, and I forgot something. I need to grab a visual aid back here. Uh, sorry. <coughs> this is a walnut seedling that uh, is from a tree in front of uh, Seminary Hall at NSU. Uh, we have a photo documentation that that tree in front of Seminary Hall that stands today is still alive on life support, I might add actually was there before the female seminary was built. And uh, uh, the last year, Natural Resources uh, collected about 100 uh, walnuts, and we uh, uh, sprouted them and have them growing in pots right now. We got with a lot of our JOM schools and some of our Learn and Serve programs and gave quite a few to those. I've got three trees left. We, uh, several of our community buildings and community groups got them. I have three trees left, including this one. And I brought those here in case uh, some of the council members uh, might have a community group that you uh, would, would like to give those to. Or, but anyway, those are out on the front porch. And uh, I shall remain until they're all gone. Or I'll take them back with me if nobody wants them. So, uh, But they're out there. And uh, as I said, though, that's, all, that's a tree that's roughly 150 years old and does have some history to it. Uh, on another note, uh, I kept back 25 of the seedlings that are being transferred into five-gallon pots, and we will have, uh, uh, obviously, uh, much larger trees, probably four-foot trees, available. 25 of those available next year. So. And that's all I really have. I will be happy to answer questions if I can, or take notes and uh, get questions to Angie if I can't answer them. Councilman Hoss. Thank you, Mr. And, and follow-up, 
if you don't know the answers immediately, but uh, there's two pieces of property in Nowata County. One is a, some land that I think the city of Nowata was wanting to donate to Cherokee Nation. I just wanted to get updated on where that stood. And then secondly, there's some land that's near the existing community building in South Coffeyville that is, I think, up for sale. And I just wondered if you could update me on that. Y yes, sir. We uh, Natural Resources met with uh, the mayor of Nowata and uh, some of their other city officials, the code enforcement uh, officer, and I believe it was a county commissioner, forgive me, the name, his name escapes me now. We met with him, I believe it was the week before last. We, have, uh, we went and we plotted all of those uh, lands that uh, they were wanting to donate. Since then, the county commissioner has came up with, I believe he says, six more lots. Uh, this also includes the airport, from what I'm understanding. Uh, uh, we're going to go back and we're going to put in those other six lots and we're going to prepare a report for the chief. Obviously, obviously the donation is free, but m most of the six lots that the county commissioner is willing to donate, uh, they have code violations on them now, which means there will be some outlay of, of cost to, if to get those. And I also want to get a total acreage figure on how much acreage we would be taking in because we'll obviously have to mow that because all of those are within the city limits. Hope, uh, I don't know when that meeting is scheduled because the, uh, the code enforcement officer wasn't in today. But within the next two weeks, I'll be getting a report to the administration. So, you know, uh, here's, the, here's where the land is. We expect the initial uh, cost outlay would be X dollars, and the average annual upkeep would be X dollars. And the plan is that if, uh, 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 since mo the vast majority of that would be housing related, we would probably try to upkeep that with uh, no HASDA funds. Yeah. As for the Coffeeville land, uh, I believe that is an administration at the GL level. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I know that Ms. Drews and the chief either have had a conversation or are having a conversation on that. And uh, either one of them would know much more about that than I did. The last I heard was uh, he had uh, offered, uh, uh, he had made a price on the entire six acres, uh, which. Uh, I think that we can probably uh, come down off of that offer a little bit if we do decide to buy it. Thank you. Thank yes, you, sir. Uh, Councilman Michonal. Yeah, I'm curious. I know people in school had asked for one of the trees. It's the oldest school in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to see if they had gotten one. Uh, I did not bring the <clears> list <throat> of the schools that got them. Uh, uh, since that school is in your district, I can give you this one and you can oh, make okay. sure that they've got one. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh -huh. uh, Thornton. Uh, the Cherokee Nation fishing codes, uh, what does one of our citizens have to do to, for fishing and where can they fish? Uh, the way the hunting and fishing code reads, uh, and we also have someone from the AG's office here today, is that uh, hunting and fishing in the tribal jurisdiction area, uh, some people call it the tribal treaty area, some people call it the tribal jurisdictional service area, the 14, the 14 county shape uh, that is done on your blue card and uh, the regulations are the bag limits, means of take and uh, dates of seasons are the same as what's in the state of Oklahoma game and fish regulations. And what uh, you're saying is that you could fish on the Arkansas River with the blue card. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I do, uh, you know, the caveat to that is that uh, the state uh, of Oklahoma, Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, they obviously have a much different take on it, and there have there has been some uh, some type citations being issued, and I know that those are being worked out through the AG's office. And what the resolution is on, on those citations, I do not know. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Council Larry Gore. Yes. Has anyone from your department went out and looked at uh, Law City School as a possible? We are making arrangements to go, and it'll be a similar <coughs> report to what I uh, described to Mr. Uh, Councilman Hoskins. We want to go out there. I looked at, I believe it was 12 acres prior, 12 acres of vacant land prior to the school being shut down. Mm -hmm. uh, that 12 acres is still part of, and I believe it's 20 okay. some odd other acres as well. And uh, the issues are, of course, you know, what's the upkeep going to be and how much of that would be, el would be suitable for housing and things like that. And the chief has asked me to prepare a report to, to that I think it's a total of 27 acres, which includes uh, 
the ball fields, the vacant land, the school, the gym, the safe room, <coughs> the safe building behind, mm -hmm. and even that community center. But the community center, I'm of the hopes that maybe we can do something with that community group out there with that. Uh, the chief had asked, you know, what what part of the uh, of that purchase, you know, would be Nahasda eligible, and we put a couple of. Uh, of scenarios in front of them on how we could prorate even the use of some of the some of the buildings in Duna Hazda. So uh, <coughs> more to come, I'm sure. Uh, we should be out there also probably yeah. next week, I would expect. Okay. And you'll report on that maybe next month. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Any more questions for Pat? Fair question. Pat, have you started uh, plowing gardens? We haven't started plowing yet because of the weather, but we are taking applications. It's time, so you might let your constituents know. And they apply to? Yeah, they can call natural resources. They can call uh, management resources at, at the at, in the pod, and uh, there's a very small form, and uh, it's it's two or three lines, and it's a twenty-five dollar. It's either a twenty or twenty-five dollar fee. I can't remember. Any more questions? Yes, sir. Yes. I, had, I had sent an email over there to Diane's total, I think, and somebody has been calling for the last three weeks every day trying to get their check on their application for the garden, and nobody will return their calls. Yeah, uh, is it a community garden or an yes, individual it's garden? Community. The community gardens are done through community okay. services, and it's okay. Corey you. Smith. Does that Ryan Smith? Corey Smith? Uh, Ryan. Ryan Smith. Thank you. More questions? <coughs> Thank you, Pat. Oh, 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 we got one. Pat, I was looking to see, is this the same corn as we had last year when we was growing it for the present to the homecoming? Uh, it's a different kind of seed. Huh? We grew, we, we grow about eight different types of corn, and just depending upon what the event is and what we have, what we have the most of at that particular time is what is what goes to those events. So, uh, but we've been growing the same type of corn for three years. So it's the same varieties. <coughs> More questions? Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, Pat. Moving on down to the real estate services. Obviously, obviously. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Norma Eli, and as you can tell, Linda Donaldson isn't here either. Uh, so she asked me to step in for her today, and uh, I, I think you all have had a chance to go over the report, and she didn't have any, really anything else to add to that. So if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. If not, I'll get back with you on that. I'll get back with Linda. Yes, Mr. Bird. <coughs> Norma, I see on the... Uh, on number two of the report, 120 acres there in Delaware County, where, where was that? Or where is the location of that? In Delaware County? Uh -huh. um, I couldn't tell you that, but you always know where that is, where that's located? 120 acres. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No, actually, it's a foreclosure sale. I think that's oh, that's right. <clears throat> yeah, off of Kenwood Road. It used to go on some of a uh, 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 Thank you. More questions for Norma? Thank you, Norma, for the report. Thank you. Moving on down to uh, environmental program, Tom Elkins. Good afternoon, sir. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you have our report, I'm sure, so I won't elaborate too much on that except to say um, there's still, uh, I know Mr. Hoskins had asked before about Cherokee Nation Waste Management, and they are still looking. Uh, in fact, they do they do the interviews in our office, and uh, so they're still 
pondering on that. In fact, they just had an interview, it seemed like last week. So they're either interviewing <laughs> still or they're still pondering on that. And then, uh, just, I'm sorry, well, one other thing that uh, kind of came to my mind as we, that was not in here that uh, we did at our last Environmental Protection Commission meeting on the second, I believe, of last month. Uh, and it reminded me when you were speaking of fishing issues, uh, but I had the report in before we put it in there. We got a permit from the EPC, one of our programs. Uh, we're going to be doing examining fish tissue for mercury and some other uh, heavy metals, mainly mercury, because we do a lot of that through our ambient air testing too, amb ambient air monitoring. And uh, with the fish tissue, we're going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, we just received a permit from them to shop the fish. It'd be similar that, to the one that we would apply to in the state of Oklahoma. But since it's within our 14 counties are the only areas that we're going to do the fish uh, uh, electrocution, we applied for it through the EPC and we're granted that. Uh, one of the questions we had, and most of our program people had, but if they get ticketed for shocking fish, would the AG's office defend them? And, and she said they would, so that may be one of our <coughs> test cases. But when we do shock the fish, it doesn't kill them. It just not kind of knocks them out. We take a small plug on the back underside of the fish, and uh, I didn't know that. I thought you had to fillet the fish. I thought we'd have a fish fry afterwards, but uh, <laughs> we don't do that anymore. Yeah, we were going to have to do quite a bit of testing to <laughs> some catfish to make sure we were okay. But uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Any questions for Tom? Thanks, yes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Moving on down to old business. Uh, <laughs> Rest land protection, care cow. I'm sorry, what, sir? <laughs> I believe we need to table that for another month, Mr. Chairman. Second. That was a motion. A motion. Yeah, and I heard Bill John seconded, I believe. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Please note that Bill Anglin opposed the table. <laughs> we got that now. <laughs> yes. Could I be added as a sponsor to that? And I believe uh, yeah. I wish you meant that she was wanting to be added as a sponsor. Now. That's all business? Under the new business. Under item one. Okay. Uh, moving on down to new business. Uh, mm -hmm. Item number one of what's the Eric Allen, Jordan? It, it, it doesn't matter. matter. How about you, Joe? Joe? We yield to age. <laughs> <laughs> I did age. not note. I did age. not say that. <laughs> I did. Oh. Well, this is an act. Uh, Game and Fish, Cherokee Nation Code, uh, Hunting and Fishing Code, establishing provisions for culturally protected species, in particular the bald eagle, the black bear, and the mountain lion, also known as puma cougar and so on. It pretty much mirrors the state law as far as uh, uh, taking and how you take them and seasons and all of that. And uh, I think it's something we need <coughs> to enforce. And with that, I would move for its approval. A second. Do we have a discussion? All in favor? Hi, uh, Mr. Chairman. We we had some folks who wanted to join. I'm not sure who all it was. The sponsors. Okay. And Dawn. Yep. Councilman Garland. Yeah. You Larry. Julie Coates. We've got a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? 